Yeah, but, like I'm kind of happy. Like I'm not. I'm not happy at all. I'm actually pretty sad that like. I started making a lot of money so young because it actually ruins all the fun out of it. Like when someone like when there's a sponsorship deal for a ton of money for me, it's like I don't even want to take it anymore because there's there's no point. It's like I already have what I want right now. It's like I'm kind of comfortable. And and now it's like when I see huge numbers, they're not as as surprising to me as they were when I first started YouTube. And I was so interested. Like I was so happy about that first, you know, thousand dollar check from YouTube. Now it's like, oh, you know, we're going to pay you 50 grand. It's like whatever it's not that big a deal and it kind of sucks because it, it ruins it all like i, I yeah. remember when i worked at cisco i'd work like overtime for like six months in a row or something and then they'd give me a bonus of like fifteen hundred dollars two grand and it'd be like ah oh, sweet you know like it's an extra yeah. two thousand <laughs> it's after tax that's the way cisco did their bonuses and you know so you have a check for an actual two thousand dollars and then like things go real well for you on youtube and such and it's like, here's a check for $5,000, but oh, fuck, do I really want to drive to the bank for four digits? Like, what a pain in the ass this is. Right? right? <laughs> yeah, and, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> four digits. My God, these are problems <laughs> I wish I had. This is like the, uh, you know, you know that pyramid of needs, like Maslow's pyramid of needs, where it's like, first, you got to take care of, uh, like, your, your physical needs, like food and water and shit and then you gotta be worried about like safety and then up at the very top it's like self-actualization right. where it's like people being douchebags like meditating all day convincing themselves <laughs> of doing something or maybe they aren't who fucking knows that that's just like the peak of like i don't have any real problems so i'm contriving them and making them up yeah exactly like, it it's seems like, like yeah if you make a ton of money young you get real quick real high up on that pyramid list to where you're like oh this amount of money they're giving me you're not thinking of it in terms of this is how many months rent and that shit apartment I, I would i used to live in like wow this is huge or this is how much this would pay on my car insurance and that was really a big deal and i was struggling it's more just like well throw it on the pile you know well, that's why you don't hear like in third world countries you don't hear about anorexia being a big epidemic like like i had a, an immediate family member with anorexia yeah. and it was like you just could not get her to eat and it's like you think about like the whole time I was thinking like what if she lived in Africa this would not be a problem at all like she would be wanting to eat she fit right in day. yeah exactly like she was a skeleton I'm like like if she was in Africa like she would be wanting to eat really badly but it's because she's in like a first world country and she has all these you know she has everything at her fingertips uh, she just doesn't want to it's almost so. like knowing the option is there Exactly. A yes. way to keep it going, where it's like if everything did go to shit right now, and they're like, "You need to start eating, or you'll die." You know, there's a Big Mac three feet away, like with someone trying yep. to shamp down your throat. But yeah, you know, it is interesting how those disorders span across.